Buying a new bike is a really exciting time, but it's important you don't get carried away and you still buy the right bike for you. Yeah, from the outside, the process can look almost kind of intimidating. It can be quite, seem quite complicated. And there's lots of applications and sizing to think about. Really. And you don't want to waste your money. Uh, yeah. There's a few ways of buying bikes nowadays. Let's start with the bike shop. We're here at Mud Dock in Bristol. Buying a new bike should be a fun experience and hopefully we'll try and take some of that stress out of it for you. One of those stressful things could be budget. So think about this early on, how much do you want to spend on your bike? And try not to overspend on that because that could not be good. Then the first most important thing is buying the right size bike. Even if a bike might be on sale or it's in the nicest paint color in the shop, make sure you find the bike that fits you. This one's caught my eye, it's a brand new Camdale Habit. It's all stealth, all black. I've seen Josh Bryson riding one of these, I want it but it's a large, this one in the shop. So the first thing I would do is actually check the manufacturer's website. So most of those will have a really good guide on what size bike will fit you. So put in your height. Funny thing is I am sort of in between sizes for most bikes. I'm five foot 10, I think that's 178 centimeters. And actually most of the bikes I ride, in fact, all the bikes I ride are mediums. But if you look at some manufacturer's websites, they'll recommend a large for me. Personally, I like a smaller size bike, so it's a bit more agile. If you like a more stable bike, you maybe want to size up a little bit. But what I go off really is the reach number. And I've looked on the Canada website and actually a large is a 460. So most of my bikes are around the 440 mark and that's what I like. But actually a medium habit is a 430. So I actually right in the middle of sizes, I'm not sure I want to go down to a 430. So I think about probably going up to a large. But the next thing to do is really to sit on that bike and this only really counts if you know what you like a bike to feel like. If you're quite new to mountain biking and you're still not sure on sizes, then that's not gonna help so much. You might need help from an expert or try the bike out, take it for a demo. The numbers on your bike, the geometry numbers, are gonna tell you a lot about how that bike's gonna fit. So if you're replacing a bike, if you're buying a new one, I would look at your old bike, look at the numbers on the website for its geometry, and then take note of that. It might be a bit smaller than you want, it might be a bit bigger than you want, but it's gonna give you a good idea of the numbers you're gonna want from your new bike. So like I said, this is a large, reaches 460, so it's a bit big, bigger than I normally run, should I say. And it does feel a bit big, this bike's a 29er as well, so it does feel a little bit stretched out, nothing too crazy. I could probably get used to it and the bike would be super stable. Uh, it's a pretty aggressive trail bike this, so I could, uh, swap that stem out it's at 50 at the moment i could run it down to a 40 that would make it probably feel about right for me and it would feel pretty stable but the other thing to consider and i think the thing that would be a problem for me with this bike in the large is that with this big drop post it's got to be at least 150 that seat's too high for me at maximum extension and even if i dropped it as far as i could it's still gonna be too high i know that so i would have to then change the seat post on this bike to make it fit um most uh, drop manufacturers do have different sizes so crank brothers do one from 100 up to 170 so i think i'll probably have to go down to a 125 something like that to make this bike work so it could work for me but i would probably stick to the medium size luckily mud dock have got a medium size habit in here and to me already actually that that uh, reach does feel better so size wise that's better it's actually a cheaper build this one it doesn't come with a dropper seat post but you can see it's uh, stuck out massively so i could fit a big drop on this you know 170 is probably the biggest that people make actually and i could get away with it also you see the standover height is nice and low so i think the medium is the one i'd go for So one of the age old questions when buying a mountain bike is do you go for a hardtail or a full suspension bike? So if you bought a, two bikes that were the same price, so say a thousand pounds, the full suspension bike would probably have a lot lower componentry because they have to budget for the extra engineering in the frame and a rear shock. So you might find that the hardtail actually comes as a higher spec and not all hardtails are for less aggressive train than full suspension bikes. You can get really light cross-country full sussers in the same way you can get really aggressive, burly built hardtails. So in talking about price, let's look at this Cannondale Habit. Now this is the alloy version, which has got a sensible but quite entry-level build kit, and it goes for about 1,800 pounds. Now, if you were to get a hardtail for that same money, you'd probably get, although not full suspension bike, but a far higher spec on the bike.
Hardtail or full suspension, I would say be realistic about what you can use the bike for. If there's no big mountains near you, you're probably not going to get the best out of a downhill bike and trail enduro bikes pedal so well now. If you're a big heavy rider and you like doing jumps, a cross-country bike probably isn't the best either. So uh, we have done a big video on this subject of what bike suits what best rider. So if you're not seen that, check that out already. So by now, hopefully you've set your price, you know what size bike you want, you know what style of bike it is. But also think about, you're probably not gonna find the perfect bike off the shelf. Uh, I often would maybe think about going for a bike that maybe has better suspension on it, so a better fork and a better shock on there, and maybe a cheaper drivetrain, because the drivetrain is really a consumable thing, so you can upgrade that later on down the line. And it's something I did with my Canyon Lux, my cross-country bike, it actually came with a grip shift on it. Everything else I really liked, but it came with a grip shift that I actually couldn't get on with, because I like holding my bars right on the very end. It didn't work that nicely for me. But it was a really simple, uh, actually quite a cheap switch, just to put a trigger shifter on there. So before you splash all of your cash on your bike, it's worth remembering you need to budget for some kind of, you know, necessary extra bits. Good place to start is with a helmet. It's certainly somewhere I wouldn't suggest skimping. And there are different styles. So all the helmets are going to be made to uh, the basic level, and they have to be to be sold within the UK. Um, but as you spend more, you're going to get more features, more tech, better ventilation, and things like that. And of course, the manufacturers will say that more expensive helmets exceed the requirements. So start with something like this, which is kind of your basic sort of cross-country or similar to actually a road lid, basically the same thing. Quite shallow, but really light and really good breathability. Progressing onto something like these, which sit a bit deeper. Um, they come with a visor, your kind of trail enduro helmets, to something like that, which actually has a chin bar. Sometimes they're fixed, sometimes they're detachable. Um, and that's been more kind of aggressive terrain and you can actually get some you know, really beefy downhill helmets. And it's certainly something one to think about. Other things like knee pads, decent pair of riding shorts, maybe even a lock. You know, it's worth doing your research before you spend all your money on just the bike because uh, you could be regretting not getting those parts. So what about uh, online versus bike shops? Pros and cons for each, but there aren't many online shops with a nice cafe like this. No, that's true, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm someone that I think because I kind of feel anyway like I know my stuff a bit, I do quite happily shop online. Yeah. But you do miss out, I guess, on that personal, that community vibe as well. Well, it's often cheaper, of course, because you miss mm -hmm. out a couple of middlemen with uh, distributors and the shop mm -hmm. taking their cut. I've always been the sort of person, well, I'm old school, I've always been to shops, had really good advice from shops. Mm -hmm got to know people. I mean, it, it depends if you've got a good local shop, not everyone does. They might not yes. live near to one. So it's nice to have someone that can help me out, potentially see the bike in mm. real life, sit on the bike, see how it feels, and then make a decision based off that. And that's true actually, because I know from working in shops that you actually sometimes get to know the bike as well as the person. Yeah, right. And it will be a case of the bike's owner is like almost secondary. It'll be like, oh, you know that <laughs> yeah, right. Canyon Strive that comes in quite a lot, that you know, yeah. so you always take the maintenance with it. And hey, people we, learn your history a bit as well. It's almost a dangerous game. So if you go into a shop and you see your dream bike in that dream color, and it's more than you want to pay, then yeah. you think, whoa, that's it, I need it. Mm -hmm. Although same can be said for online, you could have had a couple of glasses of beer at home and made a bad decision after that. <laughs> There's pitfalls in both areas. Yes, totally. I feel like online is getting more streamlined now, so things like returns. I remember a couple of years ago, yeah. it would always be a bit of a palaver. Yeah. But now stuff like that isn't so bad, but you still don't get to just try on all the different shoes and the different sizes. You know? Yeah, demoing bikes. I mean, many shops have demo fleets or can get hold of the bike that you're interested mm. in to ride. Online is possible. You do see many of them have, like, in the UK, they might tour the trail centers with a van full of bikes. So mm. it is also possible, but probably not as easy to demo an online only brand. Well, there's a few tips. Hopefully, uh, if you're looking into buying your bike, then good news. And hopefully this will help you out when you're doing it. If you want to see that video I talked about earlier, where we talked about the full range of Canyon bikes. So if you don't really know maybe what type of bike suits, what type of riding, click over there for that one. And if you want to go one step deeper into where our bikes come from and how they're made, check out Doddy's tour of the Ibis factory down here. Thumbs up and hit that subscribe button.